Hi, hi, Crystal here. Welcome to another video with the Interactive Immersive HQ. A little while ago, I did a tutorial on a generative Dada Mento and Touch Designer. If you met, missed this tutorial, I'll put it in the caption below. But I wanted to combine that tutorial with using a depth camera. Here is the raw footage. I'm um, using a connect here to use to create this animation, but you can use any depth camera. Uh, you can use a Z. Um, this is with a Connect 2, so I can have the recording, but it's easily can convert to a Connect Azure. And I'm excited to show you how this works. So as always, we'll start with the clean network and I'm going to put down a Connect top. I'm using a Connect 2, so this is just a regular Connect top. If you're using Connect Azure, uh, you will have a Connect Azure top. And I don't see anything because I don't have my connect connected. <laughs> and then you can do a connect Azure select. And in the connect select, you'll drag the connect Azure to reference it and then change the image to be depth. Because we're going to use the depth data for connect. I'm going to bypass this since we have our connect to and the image will default to be on depth. Great. Uh, I'll have a connect and image color just so we have as reference. Awesome. I'm going to add a level top. I'll leave this as is. I'll mess with this a little bit later. And I'll add a fit. And then I'll add a null. This null, I'll call this connect inst. Awesome. Have this chain over here. Then I'm going to add a grid stop. Um, have it be wireframe mode so we can just kind of see the bones of it. The size, I'm going to make it big to be 80 by 80 and rows 80 by 80. Awesome. And I want these two to be the same size. Right now, this resolution is 512 by 424. So in this fit on the common page uh, tab, I'm going to make it to be 80 by 80. And back on the fit, I'm going to have it to be fit outside. So these two can be um, combined to have the same amount of size. So the instancing won't have an issue. Great. After this, I'm going to add a null. I'll call this grid inst. Great. So we have a top, we have a, we have a stop, and let's make them both two chops. So let's connect inst. I'll add a top to chop. This top to chop, I'm going to delete the G, B, A, because we just need one channel which is the um, R outside a single channel set. I'm going to turn this on. And on the crop tab, I'm going to make it to be full image. So you might have something similar to this. Um, I have three renames and a pipe this in all three. This rename, I'll name this to be depth. I'm also going to name this to depth so I know which one's which. This one I'm going to call it rotation for ROT for rotation. Rot. And this one will be scale. I'll rename this to be scale. And I'm going to add three mats. Also pipe these in. Can play with the range later. I'll we'll add a merge. I'll merge all these together. And I'll add a null. Call this chop inst. So these are become chops. Now let's do the grid. So 
add a sop to chop. I'll add a select. And I'll select the TX and TY, not the TZ, and just call it, rename it to X and Y. And I will pipe this into the merge. And now we have a X, Y scale rotation and depth. Awesome. Um, now let's make the visual part. I'm gonna add a line sop. This line sop, I'll change the point B to be three, so it's longer. I'm gonna uh, make this into a geometry. And let's set up this render where we have a camera and a render top. This render top, I want it to be a square, so I'm gonna have it be 1280 by 1280. And I'll use a line material for this. I'm gonna pipe it onto a geometry. Uh, why I want a line is that we can play with the thickness of it. And I'll change the line color to be black. So the line page, line near color, black. And the line far to be black. Cool. Before I instance it, let's kind of make this easier to read. Add a background color. So I'm going to add a transform and add a white background. Make sure the alpha is one and comp over background color is on. Cool, this beautiful line. <laughs> let's add a null and just call, and let's call this out. Great, so we have the foundation and let's start instancing. So on this geometry, um, I'm gonna have this be as a background so we can see what's happening. This geometry on the instance tab, I would turn this on and I'm going to drag this chop instancing to a default op instancing. Cool. So on the translate X, I'm gonna have X, Y for Y, and the Z to be depth. And right now we just see lines because our camera is too close. Let's see what happens if we drag this back. Let's actually I'm gonna make this one. Background. So you can kind of start seeing an outline. So in this depth chop, let's increase the range. I'm going to increase the range to be 25. And now we're starting to see something more. Cool, we got that. Let's finish all the different instancing stuff. So rotation, we want to be all the same. Rote. Yep. Rote and scale to be scale, scale, scale. So we're starting to see more. Let's play with some of the range rotation. So there's 360 to make a circle. Um, I gonna do 200. So it's a little bit more than half. So you start seeing some rotation there. Let's see, you can play around with this, but I'll, about 240, I like that. Um, scale, I'm just have it to be scale two. And now we're starting to see something more interesting. Great, let's mess with this level over here. This level we can, if you mess with the brightness and the gamma, start getting something more interesting. And we can play with having the brightness to be also affected with the, the connect data. If you can have it so the hands, as this gets closer or further, it changes the brightness. And you see that's kind of a bit noisy. If we add a blur, Uh, increase 
and it helps smooth be more it kind of gives like a little bounce too and let's add a little border around to make it a bit cleaner so i'm gonna add a rectangle and this rectangle have it to be same resolution 10 8, 1280 by 1280 And this rectangle size to be 0 0.9, 9. And before the transform, I'll add a multiply. And pipe these two in. And I'll give it a cleaner look. And from here, it's really just tweaking different parameters to make it something more unique, we can increase the amount of depth. The rotation, the levels. And also if you want to invert it, you can add a math top and on the range to make it to be one, two, zero. And then you pretty much invert the whole look. So a lot of different possibilities available. If you want to make it to be um, reactive, you can add a connect chop and then connect chop, just select a hand. Right, let's call this and Z. Um, can add a math. Use this to affect the the Gamma. What if it, this math was just from zero to two? I don't know. And I'll just drag this to the gamma. And a little bit of a lag. Let's move that out. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I'm excited to see what you do with this. And feel free to tag the Interactive Immersive HQ and my handle, which I'll put in the caption below. And I'll add a few different tutorials uh, from the past on Connect and the original Dada Memento uh, tutorial if you're interested in looking at that. Till next time. Bye. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.